Hopeless Circus versus Terry Hands. Alright, I'm pausing the music real quick because this is something that we need to cover. If you are a player on the ladder and you are not a professional gamer, the balance at the highest level of play is not the best way of evaluating how you can deal with situations in the game. If you're a player who is bronze to GM on the ladder, you can find a way to beat Terran Air, Protoss Air, whatever the fuck Air. If you focus on your own macro progression, your upgrades, your composition, and what your follow-up is going to be behind it. For us, for us plebs who are not Soul Key and who are not Gumiho and who are not GSL Codes and all that bullshit, we can find a way to do the best we can with the tools we have available. We're not here to like circle jerk about how the game is imbalanced. We're here to figure out what we can do to improve ourselves and improve our understanding of the game. So Terran goes air. What are the exploitable things of Terran air? Zerg can produce units, air units, faster than Terran. Corruptors are good versus Terran air units. So what do you do? You go two spires and you spend almost all your money into mass corruptor with like plus two carapace plus one attack. I'm gonna show you right here. This is the wrong stream to circle jerk about imbalance. If you wanna go there almost every other stream you could do that. Not here. <clears throat> okay, this is how to beat it. A quick guide for anyone who's not GSL code S. If you're GSL code S and you would like to coach me, please email me at neurozerg.com and I will pay you for coaching. <laughs> for the rest of us, let's scout it four minutes and we see Starboard Tech Lab Research. Great. So we know to build some spores and shit. So we build spores. It's Banshee. We're macroing up. We're droning really hard. We take an economy advantage. Okay, that's great. The opponent's going for a third CC. And what's the follow-up? It's triple starport stuff. They go Banshees basically until you go Muta, and then they switch into Liberator. So going Spire off of three base economy, you could do against Bio, and you can do against Mech. It's just generally good. So what's a clue that it's not Bio? We see a fuck ton of Hellions that are just driving around the map. Usually this is going to be a mech-based play, but we don't know whether it's going to be factories or starports until we scout. So what you do is you oversee your scout. If you oversee your scout and you see this shit in particular, take Carapace upgrade because you plan on trading Corruptors with their air units. Make a Muta flock of 10 Mutas so you can deny any Banshee harassment. And then once the Banshees see your Mutas, they'll switch to Liberators. Look, we see the opponent making three Liberators. Not a big surprise with fucking Banshee speed. Great. The Roaches and Queens are defending the Hellions. The Corruptors are going to deal with the Liberators. And I'm adding a second Spire as this upgrade is going so we can go double upgrades and then fight the Liberators directly. The Mutas have a very small timing window where they can harass, but then once the Liberators come out, they move away. They should be keybound separately from Corruptors. Against Mass Air, you think of your Corruptor cycle as basically your main army, your direct engaging force. And the Mutas are like the finesse force. The Roaches, I mean, whatever. They can just defend against Hellions, I guess. They have almost no ground with this style. So while Mass Starport might be crazy or seem really, really powerful, if you don't deviate from your standard plan, if you understand the counter style to this style, it's incredibly easy to beat. So you just mass corruptors. You mass one unit, and you can beat them. Like, think from the Terran's perspective. What is the stuff that Terran players will complain about? They'll complain about the Zerg can make one unit and win. This is a case where we can make one unit and win. So we can kind of embrace that and enjoy it situations where we can make just mass corruptor. So what's the timing? You could max out. That would be a good time to attack. These two upgrades finishing at the same time. That would be a good time to attack. Carapace and attack. They have weapons level 2, but they don't have any armor. Great. So we have an upgrade advantage. We're going to have a supply lead. We have an economy lead. I didn't actually scout this hidden base. It's kind of cheeky. Ultimately, it won't matter because Zerg is very strong and we understand how to play the counter style. Okay, so thinking about positioning here, as it was said, air units can kind of cluster up easily. Corruptors are very sturdy, so as long as you pre-split them, they can kind of take care of themselves and then you can just A move. So the first thing you want to do is like put some here, some here, some here, some here, and then A click to like here, where the liberators are. 
and you'll naturally get a nice big arc moving into attack. So I'll just go with my vision. So I'm hotkeying a new base, gonna take a base. Expanding while you attack is always really good because you're pretty much guaranteed to at least get something done. Sometimes you can break the opponent and win the game. If not, you have a new base to fall back on. So let's look at the units. It's 27 Corruptors against 9 Liberators and 3 Banshees. Like how silly this is. And then if you get on top of their starports, they literally can't do anything. The game is over. It's a victory condition. Beating triple port Terran in 12 minutes. See? You don't have to complain. You could just ask. Rather than say, oh, mass Terran air is unbeatable. Hey, other Zergs, what are you doing against mass Terran air? And you can field some good ideas. But, Neuro, I have an important question. Hmm. What if I just want to complain and not actually get anything done? Well, I, I said earlier on there are plenty of streams. You could even say most streams will help you with that. Wow. Just join the chat, kind of say fucking whatever race that's not your race, you can't right. complain about your own race. Okay. But if it's a Terran stream, you complain about how Zerg and Protoss are easy to play. If it's a Protoss stream, you complain about how Zerg and Terran are easy to play. And if it's this stream, you take some goddamn responsibility for your own macro slip-ups and improve. Okay? Thank you. That was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> GG, drop the mic. <laughs> Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate your patience, I know. StarCraft is a complex game. Okay, so, opinion on Zerg Air. This is something that people tend to talk about a lot. They'll say, oh, Zerg's Air is weak. Let's just zoom out one step about how Zerg is different from the other races in the basic capacity. If you look at the stats of Zerg units compared to Protoss and Terran units, Zerg units are cheaper, typically weaker, like less HP, less armor or whatever, less spells, shit like that. But they're produced more quickly. So if we have fast, cheap units that are produced more quickly, we should swarm them. Ah, suddenly we realize that Heart of the Swarm, the campaign, was actually trying to tell us something about how Zerg is unique from the other races. We swarm them. So in this game, what happened? The Corruptors versus the Liberators. It's true that if Liberators get up to a super high count, and the Terran player is maxed with Liberators and 3-3 upgrades, and Zerg player is maxed with Corruptors and 3-3 upgrades, maybe the Liberators would trade better. But with Zerg, we can max out first, assuming kind of equal macro progression. So if Zerg gets a 200 supply of Corruptor, the Terran should be at like 150 to 170 supply of whatever the fuck air units you're talking about. So it, yes, it's very true that Zerg air units per unit are going to be weaker than Terran and Protoss units, but they're produced more quickly. And then you can also remax faster. So you trade 200 supply of corruptors and then you rebuild 200 supply of corruptors. Yeah, if they went mass hellbat, you should have gone roach. You notice that game I also had 1-1 one, one roaches. 1-1 one, one roaches are really, really strong against hellbats. You would just have like one group of maybe 10 to 15 roaches and you shut that down entirely. Very, very straightforward. Players will out-macro you. That's going to happen on the ladder, too. Like, they'll go for some style, and you won't be able to beat them. It doesn't mean that the style is OP. Sometimes it means that they just outplayed you. Most of the time, that's what it means. Also, just understanding dedication. If you dedicate yourself to playing one race in the game, just embrace the strengths and weaknesses of that. Just say, all right, I'm a Zerg player. I play Zerg. I'm not on the balanced fucking design team, so I'm going to try and use the tools that are put into the game to the best of my ability, and then increase upon that use over time, like get better at it, rather than 
like constantly talk about how the shit is not perfectly fair. Life as a game is not perfectly fair and it's never going to be perfectly fair. So just embracing the non-fairness of reality is a huge step in being a person.